Hello. <laughs> Today at Creation Campus, we are going to show you how to make an overhead cupboard. So our plan here is we're having a cupboard here with two doors and then at the end we're going to have a microwave. So we're going to start, we put our end panel in, so this is going to be our kitchen. So we're going to have a fridge here and a sink and stuff. Um, so we're going to go for nice flush doors in a cream gloss wood. So yeah, so we've got a jig that we use. And this helps us when we're routering out the holes. So we're happy with the size of how long we want this. So we're gonna go now and knock up the sizes that we need. So we've, this is just our very old sort of rough. But it's like our, what we clamp to, isn't it? But it's also- It's our sacrificial piece. It's our sacrificial, because when, um, when you're routering the hole out, mm. it just allows all the dust to fall yeah. through, Yeah, it? also it? stops damaging the bench, yeah. And then we only interface with this on certain parts, so. So this is our piece of wood that we are using to make the overhead front. Um, to just, oh, it's uh, 290 wide, 1,175 millimetres wide we are doing this. So this is our jig that we use. To, um, to make our holes so our router follows this. So we've got different size offsets from the top to the bottom. Um, we have it a little bit bigger at the bottom to allow for the aluminium angle that we use at the corners. So we have an extra 10 mil at the bottom. And then by appearance, the door looks like it's in the middle then, doesn't it? Yeah. So we level this up. And then, because of the two pieces of wood on the back of this, it stops the actual door panel from sliding and it keeps it locked in one position. So when you are routering, it's not jumping all over the place. So we line it all up and then we clamp it. So this is our template set now. So this is up. So now we are going to router out the doors and then we'll, that allows us to use the middle piece for the actual door so there's no wastage on the panel. So we've got our router sets of our six millimeter router bit. Flute bit. Flute bit, that's what it's called. <laughs> Let's have a look. Ooh. It's in better days but it still cuts. Also we do it like this as well because if you've got a grain in the in the panel then you, you can basically match up all the grains and stuff like that so it gives quite a nice effect. So for this job, we have to put some fantastic safety gear on. So now, so we've got our guide, we're gonna call it. What's it called? Um, yeah. This is our dedicated router just, just for doing this job. So now, all I do is mark where I should go. I'm gonna go over to this one. Knuckle uh, drill and drill down the centre. Because otherwise, it's quite hard to get the router bit through. Because nut drills. So, I don't know if you noticed, when I was going round, it came to around here, but then we then we rotated back around to the same spot, because sometimes you find there's an ever such slightly offset on the guide. So, so if you come back around, then you're sometimes like a few millimetres out. So, 
it's always good to finish in the same position that you started. And another thing what's always a good idea to do is mark which one's which. So we'll go up, obviously there's a mask on these, and what should we say, one, up and one there. So we'll maybe draw or one. should we say left, so now oh. this is the left and that one's the right. So here. I was just going to go one and two, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> It's a bit more clear though, left and right, doesn't it? <laughs> so, we can now take these out, sand them up, trim them, and then there are our doors. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna sand all the edges, make it perfect. And then what we do when using tea trim on the, uh, the side where the lip is, just put a gentle, very small sort of 45 degree edge on it, just so when you're knocking your tea trim on, it doesn't like chip any of your decorative coating on your wood. very slight 45 degree angle there to help knock the tea trim on so now what we'll do is we'll router it up put the groove in it and then we'll put our tea trim on so at the minute this is my favorite tool this is what we use to cut our um hole for our tea trim so we use a 1.5 mil slot cutter um, you can get this, if you're using tea trim, you can get these from the companies that you, you get your tea trim off. So, our rouse bit stays set. It does take a while to be able to get, when you are doing it, get some off cuts of wood and make sure you've got your slot cutter set at the right height so your trim goes on perfect and it's not overhanging. But what I'd always recommend to do is do a test. So I've got same piece of wood here. Always do your test with the same piece of wood. So yeah. Happy with the router settings. It's very important when you're routering to um, make sure your router's flat and down because you don't want to put, you know, when you put your trim on, if you've if you've messed up on your router and your trim won't follow it. make sure the join of our trim is at the top of the door on it overhead because then um, you can't really see the join line the way if it's at the bottom visually you can see it so always put your, your join at the top and then if you're doing a door for the bottom of the van you'd put your join at the bottom the thing is when you're using gloss wood doesn't clamp too well. <laughs>
So now we need to do the join. So we need to cut this so it'll be a nice perfect join. So what I do, so I'll get some snips. I'll sort of work out where it needs to be. And I'll put a little mark on it. And then I'll hammer this in here and go back. And there's a trim door. So what I'll do is I'll just check the back. Obviously we've got the protection on, but I'll just make sure it's hammered in all the way around and that there's no gaps. And also feel with your fingers because you can feel if it's, if it's not smooth. So we've got the same, same principle here. We've sanded it, put a 45 sort of degree little edge on. We've routed it for the trim. So now we know this is going to be the top of the cupboard. So we'd put our lip at the bottom. So we're not going to be putting these little butt hinges, is that what we're called? Flush hinges. Flush hinges. So. I always set them with the the P or the nine, whatever. So what you're looking at, see that? P. So it's a P. What about if you go to that side? Then it's a nine. Then it's a nine. <laughs> anyway, let's get our P's and nines the right way. So we always set this. So it's level with the bench. You can see it's hitting the the lower of the bench there. And with the the P or the nine sticking towards the outside. Recap whilst we're in this position. We've got a piece or something of mine. He's just screwed. So we've got the the nine facing out. The reason we've got it facing out is because when we land it, and we can land this against our work. So we've got we set it so the flat bottom of the door we line the hinge up with there. Also, a little tip when you're doing this: if you're working with wood. Um, that has got a protective film on it, peel the corner. Just because when you're trimming it, obviously the trim goes over. So if you just peel the corner, when you do come to remove all your protective film, you can grab the corner you've already pre-peeled, otherwise you're like, you're picking at it and it's a bit of a pain. So we basically clamps this piece onto the bench, but I always like to leave a bit of bench showing. So when you and you drop through, it doesn't go beyond. <laughs> so now while we're in this position, we're gonna put the catches in. So for these particular doors, so we've obviously done these doors, this, this size door previously. So we've already made a jig for the catch. So the holes we cut are uh, 30, 34, I don't know why they're 34 by 50. So these are Evo catchers that we're using. So generally, it's 15 millimeters from the outside. So right on the outside of the trim here, it's 15 mil back, then 50, and then there's a 34, 34. But because we've got a lovely little jig, so we've already worked out our sensors and all that sort of stuff. So we can just put it straight in the middle, Draw around it. So now I'm just going to draw the corners. So I'll just do a test fit. Brilliant. Before you screw these in, just make sure they're sitting square because there is a little wiggle room in your hole. And also, 
don't over tighten them. So then the other thing that we have to do is put the catch on. So they're quite simple. Right, so we've removed the mask off this area here that we don't want. So now we're going to be putting the catch on. So the catch has just got like a very small little ramp angle to it. Quite good these catches because you can use this end as well, but we're not going to be using that end today. So it's going to line it up there. A little sort of cut there, cut there. Can we see the cut? So that's the question, just about. So we're going to be cutting along it. <clears throat> so now that will now slide over there quite happily. And then we're going to just quickly. Was a bit of the trim off. No. Okay, close the door. We need the ramp. Can you see that? You need the ramp angle to um, pop up nicely and then it catches. So our cupboard, cupboard is here. So we're now, this angle at the top here is very, very minimal. So we've now actually put an angle on this one because they sink into the carpet quite nicely. But here is a bit more pronounced. So we're just going to get our handy dandy bevel. And we're going to match match the wall to the this here, which that's oh, that's oh, close enough for what we want and i always go a little bit more <laughs> the reason i go a little bit more is because it doesn't really matter if the top doesn't sit that well but then it it really pushes itself into the carpet so we've now got our angle so what we do is take this to the saw so i'm now gonna Stop. So just cut on the aluminium angle now. On a wood saw? Yes, it does it. So what I'm gonna do now is um I'm going to just drill some holes in the back of the angle and that's how we're going to screw it through to the wood at the back. So now this is the the one with the angle on it, the, one, the bottom of the cupboard. So I don't know if you've ever used a Craig system before. So we like to use Craig's going into the wall because of the angle and all that sort of jazz. So. Okay, so we've got our angle. Done the holes in the back. So what I'm gonna now do is peel off the protective layer because if you forget, it's a nightmare to get out. I'm going to take it all off. Yep. So we're going to make sure it's lined up. So we're going to corner block up this when we're fitting it now. So what we do is when we are fitting these to the top, just because the roof does give a little bit of a taper, we just set them down just a couple of mil. So on this panel on the square edges, I'm just going to put in a couple of these blocks. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, we'll oh, forget to peel it.
So now we can um, put them both together. Three sixteens. So now we've got a basic carcass of um our cupboard. All it needs now is some of the gas struts putting on. And we can install it.